Hi, my name is Nick, and this tooltip is on creating retaining walls. Retaining walls are used to hold back earth in certain areas of a design. In Envisioneer, we can accomplish this a couple of different ways depending on the version of the program you have. In all versions of Envisioneer, you can use these slope and retaining wall tools to create your retaining walls. So let's take a look at how we can do this in Envisioneer. So first what we're going to do is we're going to add in our design and right now I'm looking at the foundation plan of my design. Now if I'm going to be sloping this site I want to, to make sure that the site cuts around the foundation location. So first I need to go up to settings and document settings and under the terrain option I want to make sure that the auto cut terrain is set to be my uh, foundation. So I want to change that to be foundation. I'm going to click apply and then OK. Next I'm going to add in my slope. So where do I want my slope to affect my actual terrain? So I'm going to use the slope tool and I want this to be in a negative 8 feet direction and I'm going to say OK. And I'm going to start it from this corner here and I'm just going to slope it out and we'll say I want it to come out let's just say 20 feet. So what I've essentially done now is I've taken my site and I've sloped it um, 8 feet down over a 20 foot run. And when I take a look at our camera from the backyard, we can see that I can see my terrain is sloping, but it's intersecting with my door. And I actually want to add in some retaining walls off of the sides here to create a, a cutout in the terrain to hold back that earth. So I'm going to go back in the 2D. And I'm just going to simply take the walls that I've already drawn on my foundation location and I'm just going to stretch them out to go past the actual terrain line. And that adds in two retaining walls. These two retaining walls aren't going to hold back the earth just yet. So right now we have just added in those retaining walls. What I want to do next is I want to add in a wall that's going to be invisible. So I'm going to go back up to building and under the floors option you're going to see a room division option. And this will actually add in a very thin wall that is going to be used to create a break in your actual foundation. So I'm going to select room division. I'm going to select my first point and then my second point and you'll now see that the terrain is now removed from within that area. And now I can see how that's going to look. Since I have the auto floor option enabled, it's automatically going to add a floor in for me. So I'm going to select that and delete it out. You can also see that the walls are very high from the very start of the wall to the end of the wall. And I don't really need them to be that high. So I'm going to select this first wall option. And I'm going to go in and say right click properties. And I'm going to take that wall and I'm going to go into the top and bottom tab. And I'm going to say that I want to slope this wall. And if I look at the actual markers, I can see that this green dot is representing the start point. And I want that to be three feet high. I want the stop point, so where it intersects with my wall, to be eight foot six, because that is the height of my wall. And when I say OK, it will now slope that wall for me. Let's say I want it to be stepped. So I'm going to select the opposite wall. I'm going to go right click properties and again taking a look at where the red and green grips are I can determine how I want this wall to be stepped. So I'm going to go back to the top and bottom tab. This time I'm going to select stepped and I'm going to change the start point which is the green dot to be 8 foot 6 and I'm going to select the stop point and make that 3 feet and I can now adjust the maximum step value and I want this to be two feet and what this will do is it will now create that step look for our wall. I'm also going to need to add in a floor in here so I'm going to go back in the 2D and I'm going to use the floor tool and I'm going to do floor by picking points. I'm just going to select a six inch concrete slab and I'm just going to pick points inside of that defined area. And now when I look at that from our backyard view, I can see that concrete floor added in. I can select it and elevate it 
a negative 4 inches to drop it down to create that area. And that's how you're able to add in a retaining wall using all versions of Envisioneer. If you are using the Building Essentials and Construction Suite packages, you can actually use the Spot Points option to create the same effect. And this just gives you greater control over where you want your actual slope to be. So I'm going to delete the terrain out. And I'm now going to go in. I'm going to leave the walls in because that process stays the same. And I'm just going to add in Spot Points. So I'm going to go to Terrain. And I'm going to select Spot Point. And I'm going to say OK. And now I need to define where I want these spot points to go. And when I do my spot points, I always pick each corner of my design. So I'm going to pick each corner. And I also include areas where I know I want this to actually start to slope. The difference with the retaining wall is I'm going to be going towards the inside of this design as well. So I'm going to pick all of these points. like so, and again selecting every corner of my design. Right click, finish, and now I can start to add in different values. So here let's say I want this to be, this is the point where I actually want to start to see it go down, so this is going to be negative 4 feet. And then this is going to be obviously minus 8 feet. And this is going to be minus 8 feet as well. You're just going to go around and you're going to add in all of these values to create that shape. So again, I'm going to go in and select the terrain in negative 8 feet. I'm going to go in and change these to be negative 8 feet. And again, this outside one here is going to be that negative 4 foot again. I'm going to say OK. And what that does is it now creates that terrain for us. So when I go in and I look at this in our 3D view, we can now see that terrain is also sloping to conform around those walls that we specified. I can also adjust the properties of this by going into Settings, Document Settings, and under the terrain option, whenever you convert your terrain to be a tin mesh, you now have the ability to control how coarse or how smooth it is going to look. So here I can go in and adjust the actual tin smoothing to show that this is going to be a little bit smoother so it doesn't show as jagged and I can see the actual contours of that site along my retaining wall. We hope this tooltip helps you moving forward. If you like what we are creating, be sure to subscribe for future videos. If you have comments, please let us know below. Thank you.